Okay, so far we covered um, architecture in general sense, uh, what happens in CPU, what happens in hard disk, um, like physical storage structures, and logical storage structures, uh, background processes, system global area and all that. So once the system is installed or Oracle system is installed on a server, and this thing, next thing is the users need to connect to the system from their client machines or their own machines called as client machines. And wherever the server Oracle is running, it's called Oracle server, correct? And uh, so what it does, what does it take to um, make clients are able to connect to the server? Um, we will be studying that in the network setup. Okay, so in simple case, let's say you're the, all the users and the server are on the same network, okay, on um, local LAN or WAN or um, even if they're connecting through a VPN to the network. So as long as they have uh, some sort of connectivity to the server, if they can reach to the server or ping to the server, there will be a program called listener program which will be learning on the server side and that will be listening to all the requests coming from the client. Listener program, in a minute I'll be showing you um, in, uh, how um, you set up that. Okay, on the client side also, uh, we need to have some setup called TNS name, so I will be showing you that, uh, which will tell how to connect to, this, to the server and which will uh, give directions on the SQL net layer to connect the uh, client to server and later on once the connection is established when the user password is verified um, clients or users can run queries of select or update or insert delete uh, through this pipe or to this channel and get the data or get the results from the server to the client So first let's look at on the listener program or listener um, file on the server side. Listener file will have coding like this, which will tell it's listening at particular host or IP address on particular port for incoming request from the client side. And it'll also give the SID, which is a system identifier name, uh, identifier for the server. So when you create a Oracle instance, you give a SID or service name to it, and you will be using either service ID or service name, say a system identifier or service name in this SID list, list listener. So with these details, it's basically listening at this IP address or host name at the port and connecting to that particular SID or service name and handing it over. So its purpose is all listening at uh, corresponding address and handing over to the database for incoming requests, okay? On the client side, um, you need to have sqlnet.ora and or tnsnaps.ora. Um, saying again, it's and or SQLNet.ora and uh, or TNS names.ora. The reason is in SQLNet.ora is only telling direction whether to use what preference, whether to use the TNS names. If you don't want to use TNS names, TNS names is not only one way. You can have Oracle names server or even try to use some kind of host names to directly connect to it. And uh, if it's in the same company, you can have default domain, which will be appended for all the TNS names dot ORA TNS connections. So uh, in TNS names files will look like something like this, where the primary important thing is you are coming from your machine to the host machine. And this host name is actually referencing to the server server name. And on that server, there will be one particular port which where the listener is listening. In this case, the default port is 1521. So it's listening at 1521. And um, by default, if you don't make any changes to the port, by default, it's 1521. And it's listening at particular service name or SID. And you're asking, go to that IP ma machine, connect to the port, and connect in the behind that port, there should be a service or SID 
um, running with the database connect to that so this will be able to establish a right proper connection from client to server but this is just the connection you always need to provide your username password authentication uh, a process need to be happen on the server and before you can uh, execute any queries now the the explanation which I was giving you was um, a simple client server based architecture but uh, in reality today's world uh, you might have a lot of not just one layer of client and one layer of server you might have multi-tier uh, uh, connections okay so in that case if you have you might be uh, getting connected from web services and those web services may have application services and application services are connected um, to users are getting connected to the applications or services so this these are all multi-tier architecture in which even legal uh, legacy systems like IBM mainframes and uh, other systems can come into play as well but this is uh, we will be discussing these kind of scenarios uh, with JDBC connections which is not going to use the C uh, T uh, SQL net layer and uh, some a few other connection models in our regular advanced class.